Chris from Tech Tablets here with the Zeus Transformer Book T100HA. Now this is the one that has the new generation Atom processor in it. That's the Cherry Trail. And my current fig configuration here that I have has four gigabytes of RAM and a 64 gigabyte eMMC drive. Now upon first boot, running the tablet, I got a lot of this. There's a lot of bloatware that Zeus have installed. Uh, they want me to register the product. I think you need to do that for part of the guarantee warranty purposes. Um, web storage keeps popping up, it wants to update. And if I have a look at all applications here, and you'll see that there is a lot installed. Uh, they have a Zeus gift box, live update. That's pretty handy because you can update some of the drives and things. Um, virtual camera, splendid utility, web storage, wind flash, that's for flashing the BIOS. And the gift box here from a Zeus. Candy Crush, did I want Candy Crush? No, maybe I didn't, but they've installed that anyway for me. Dropbox as well has been installed. Uh, what else we got? Flipboard, Gameloft Games, and Ice Power, I think that's to do with the sound, audio. Might need to keep that. And Netflix as well. TripAdvisor, yeah, there's a whole bunch of blow where they installed there that I don't normally see this on my Chinese tablets that I review, they don't normally have anything installed, maybe perhaps just a video tutorial in Chinese that I can quickly just delete, but I'm gonna to have to spend some time to remove all that bloatware and crap that they've already pre-installed on there. Um, overall, the touch screen seems to be really responsive, and, and I have no problems with that. You can see that selecting and moving things around. Uh, sometimes maybe I don't touch so well because I'm using the camera here and I have a tripod in the way. It's a little bit more difficult there. Now, battery life, it took me probably about four hours, three, no, sorry, three hours to charge the tablet up to 80%. And since then, I've just installed uh, a couple of applications and run two benchmarks so far. And according to Battery Bar Pro here, which I use to give me a rough estimate of battery life, it's a lot better than the built-in Windows estimates. And it's telling me I've got just under six hours of battery life. Now, that's a far cry from that. 14 hours of video playback that Zeus claimed. Okay, I've got wireless on and everything else, and I'm running the brightness here at just 50%, and you're looking probably, yeah, web use, just under six hours. So if you're gonna play video, maybe, standard definition video, or 720p video or something like that, with, with the tablet running in airplane mode, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe then you can get 10 hours, but I think the battery life is definitely over, said. Exaggerated there, big time. Okay, now eMMC speed and the micro SD card slot here. These are the speeds here of the Samsung 64 gigabyte eMMC. Now there are other versions with only 32 gigabytes and another version with 128. They could be a little bit slower, but probably be around about the same speeds there, which aren't too bad for eMMC spec 4.5.1. And you can see that write speed of 80. Now this is actually a lot faster than my Surface 3 even got. And the 4K speeds there, random speeds, not too bad. Again, for an eMMC, I mean, this isn't SSD territory, but, but they're not too bad. And this is the speeds here right now of the 64 gigabyte Samsung Evo, Evo driver I have in the actual tablet at the moment. Not too bad speeds there, so it's not limited to those slower speeds. Normally on other tablets you see this limited to about 23, which the old model was limited to, and not the case here. So you can take advantage of those high speed memory cards. Now the memory card, I just will show you that it actually sticks out a little bit here, which um, I don't particularly like because it's not that hard to accidentally maybe bump that inside a case and can pop out and you could lose your SS, your micro SD card there. So it sticks out a little bit. I understand probably why they did that design-wise. It's very easy to remove it. You don't need long fingernails. You don't have to uh, use a pen or something to get it out. Like some of the tablets I've tested, they have it when it sits in right there nice and flush, but now it actually just sticks out a little bit there. So something to consider there if you don't like that. Maybe you don't want to lose the SD SSD card when you're traveling. You could perhaps pull that out. Maybe it's not going to be an issue. Who knows? Maybe I'm just being a bit too fussy with that. Um, now the the free, sorry, the RAM that's installed is four gigabytes on this version here. So I'm just going to quickly show you also the device manager, and I'll just get into that device manager here, and just show you quickly a couple of things in here. So we have disk drives. We can see that this is the Samsung model of eMMC installed, 
And if I go along here and just find out what else have we got? Network adapters, Broadcom, not Realtek. I keep seeing the Realtek all the time and Asus have gone with Broadcom. So that's A, B, G, and N wireless. And I don't think that is dual band. So just 2.4 gigahertz there. Common on these lower end devices, such as this one here, uh, sensors, orientation sensor, and whatnot there. Now the processor of course is the Atom X5Z8500, and that's a quad core. And the battery capacity also, just another thing that I forgot to point out, that it's really saying that I've lost 4.4%, the battery's already worn, which is interesting for that to pop up. Now it's giving me a new estimate now of about seven hours, so that's looking a little better there, but the tablet was just idle just before, so probably taking that into account there. Now the Geekbench 3 score, just bring that up, I just benchmarked that before. I will have our 3D Mark scores coming up soon and I will do some gaming tests that everyone likes to see what these tablets can really do when it comes to gaming. I'll definitely test that out, those will up soon. So the score's almost 900 there on the single core and just below 3000 there. So CPU wise that's not really that much faster is it than the old Bay Trails, but graphically this should be almost twice as fast what I've seen at least on the Surface 3 and the X98 Pro tablet that I've tested, graphically should be twice as fast than the previous generation there. Now the screen, I know a lot of you are concerned about that 1280 by 800 resolution. Um, it's not actually too bad. When you're looking at it from about here, you don't notice any pixels, but if I bring this right up close to the camera and hopefully get it to focus, then you can start to see, okay, a few pixels. And it's really noticeable things like the Windows logo there that's covered in smudges. It's another thing. The, their screen is very uh, fingerprint prone, smudge prone. If you look maybe there on the logo, and you can see that it's not as sharp as when you're looking on some of those retina screens, of course. Um, I don't think it's a complete deal breaker. I mean, it, maybe it is for some. So if someone's coming from an iPad Air, uh, yeah, maybe they're not going to like the screen. Definitely it's a step back and you're going to see, oh, the, the screen looks a little jagged. Um, probably because you're looking too close, um, but you know, you're going to, you're going to see the difference because uh, it is a little jaggy there. But the good thing is it is fully laminated uh, there's no air gap in it and the viewing angles are really good. Uh, brightness, I'll just show you full brightness. Of course the, the camera sensor is adjusting, but full brightness is reasonably good. I will actually measure that and find out just how bright that screen is in my full review. Um, so it's not too bad. As long as you're not looking at it really close, you're not going to notice those those pixels. and. Uh, 1366 by 768 screen resolutions that I've seen on the Chewy VI10 doesn't really bother me that much. It Again, it depends on what you want from a tablet. If you're going to be looking and need that kind of high resolution, if you want to watch 1080p movies in the native resolution on the screen, then, then this isn't the tablet for you. Definitely not. So let's have a look quickly now at Explorer here. Typing on the screen, as I mentioned, it's pretty responsive. And uh, no, I just jump on here to techtablets.com. And I will do a quick test also of the speakers, see how loud they are. Okay, so of course, Windows Edge, if you've used it before, it's very smooth, very fluid, and no problems here. Runs really well. And the accuracy of the screen seems really good. Very fluid, fast loading times here. Now just jump on to YouTube and see if I can load up some sort of audio track that's not going to give me any copyrights on this video. So maybe with someone here talking. Oh, Ricky Martin songs, not, <laughs> not what I wanted. Hang on. I just run here. Um, it's picked up my geolocation here being Spain, so it's showing me all these videos in Spanish. I do apologize for that. Uh, 
That's... Okay, um, that's not a very good example there, sorry. Uh, but the audio is very loud, hopefully you can pick up on that just there. I'll just see if I can type in something here. Carbon-based live forms, that's something that's not going to give me any copyright issues. Let's jump into that. Okay, that is very loud. Those speakers are very loud, and there's actually a slight hint of bass there with the beat, which is uh, interesting for a tablet, because normally they're very flat, the speakers. So there's a little bit of a bass there, so that's not too bad. Now I'm just gonna quickly go on to my final little test here, if you just bear with me in the video, and that is speedtest.net. Now I am finally on 4G LTE connection here. So hopefully I can see what I can get. I'm not actually that far away from the wireless router that I have, router, sorry. Let me just begin this test here. Okay, on my desktop plugged in with the LAN connection, I can get around 50 megabits per second. That's my full speeds that I can get out of my LTE connection that I have here. And that's not too bad. It's actually a little slow, to be honest. And I can get about 25 upload. It's getting close to that. But with my Core M X2 Pro that I was just been testing out, I managed to get 50 from the wireless. So this is a little slower there. Okay, so 24, that, that upload speed is perfect, that's not a problem. But the download speed was a little slower there, not too sure why that was, it could have been all sorts of variables there. Okay, so that's a quick hands-on here now with the uh, ASUS Transformer Book T100HA. Thank you for watching this video, I will have more up and coming videos if you are interested, so do stay tuned to my YouTube channel. I'll try and upload though, those as soon as possible. We're testing out some games like Counter-Strike uh, Global Offensive, uh, Dota 2, League of Legends, Team Fortress 2, all those kind of games that people like to play online and possibly on a tablet like this too. So I will do those videos shortly for you. Thanks for watching. I hopefully catch you soon. Bye for now.